lie, this month was actually a really good reading month, star rating wise, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my February wrap-up for 2018. I actually did a lot better than I thought I was going to do this month. I read seven books. I was pretty sure that I was gonna read like maybe one because school has just been kicking my ass this semester. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> first book that I picked up and took pretty much the entire month to read was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is the fourth Harry Potter book. You all know this. I gave this a five out of five stars. I'm not gonna go into detail because I have a vlog of my experience of reading Harry Potter for the first time as a 22 year old. So if you want to check those videos out, then they are up there and also in the description box. I took forever to jump on this bandwagon and I am so glad that I'm finally on it, but this was a, this was a hefty book, but can I just say Cedric is adorable and um... I'm still bitter. The next book I have is the second in a series, so I'm not going to go into huge detail about it, but it is The Swan Riders by Aaron Bow. This is the second book in the Prisoners of Peace duology. I think it's a duology. Not 100% sure, but the first book is The Scorpion Rules. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it. It was okay. 100% my favorite character is still Talus. He's the sassy, sarcastic AI who took over the world a bunch of years ago. Greta, who is the main character, really pissed me off in this book, so like... I ain't a fan. Honestly, I probably would have given it a 2.5 if it wasn't for Talus, but I definitely enjoyed the first book in this series better. I have no idea if it's a trilogy, a duology. I'm a terrible booktuber. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry about it and don't do my research. The next book I have is Nice Try Jane Sinner by Leanne Ogel, and I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's about a 17 year old named Jane Sinner who was recently expelled from her high school so she decides that in order to finish her high school diploma she is going to go to community college and that is when she joins a reality TV show run by the students called House of Orange. She's competing against five other contestants in the school and it is to win a car and it's basically just the story of all the adventures that come from that. I loved this book. It was hilarious. Jane is such a relatable character. Her humor is so much like mine that half the time I was just laughing at this book. I also really liked how the book was set in college because I find that a lot of YA books don't have that setting so it was really nice to see and be able to relate to that. Obviously the whole reality TV show isn't that relatable. It was still really funny to read about all the adventures that Jane and the other characters got into. The book also explores a lot of difficult topics like suicide and religion and faith and friendship and family. It was done in a very respectful and relatable way so I really enjoyed that. I also really liked the writing style. The script style of the book was really unique and it was really fun to read. Also the characters, every single one of them in this book were so well done. They were all so unique and had their own personalities which I loved. Obviously Jane is my favorite but I also really liked Mark. He was hilarious. Also side note, I really want a McNugs club at my university. Like I would be president and chief of that club. I'm just saying. But overall, hilarious book. 100% recommend it. Y'all should read it. The next book, I don't actually have my physical copy because my mom took it to read because I'm obsessed with it and I just need her to read it. But it is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. It's one of my favorite books now. I'm obsessed with it. It was pitched as Hocus Pocus meets Practical Magic, which are two of my favorite movies, so I was like beyond excited to pick up this book and thank you so much to Simon & Schuster for sending me a copy of it. I'm beyond grateful. The book follows Penny Tavolt who is a 17 year old living in the town of Sparrow where two centuries ago three sisters were drowned after being accused of being witches. So now every year on the summer solstice these three sisters return to the town of Sparrow and they basically take over the bodies of three teenage girls. Once they take over the bodies, they basically find boys, get them to fall in love with them, and then drown them out in the harbor. That's when a boy named Bo comes to the town of Sparrow, and he has no idea 
that this happens every summer solstice. So when he arrives, he meets Penny. She offers him a job working in the lighthouse on the island where she lives, and she decides that she needs to protect him from these swan sisters before anything happens to him. I loved this book so much. It was so eerie and entertaining. Like, I needed to know what was going to happen next. I was able to call a huge, like, twist. It was pretty obvious, but it didn't really affect my overall reading. Usually, I hate when I can call the ending of books, but I really thoroughly enjoyed this one. It's definitely a very slow build story. It contains parts from the present and the past. You get a history of the Swan Sisters, and you get to see how their story developed, but you also get the story of Penny and Bo and everything that goes on in the town of Sparrow, and it is just so good. Like, I can't express how much I love this book. 100% you guys, like, read the book because it is hecka good. The next book I have is called The Lucky Ones by Tiffany Rise, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Again, thank you so much to HarperCollins for sending me a copy. I'm beyond grateful. The book follows Dr. Capello, who is a famous brain surgeon, and he basically chose five children who were otherwise abandoned or orphaned. He takes them to his beach house, which he calls the dragon, and basically he provides them with this life that is incredible and everybody wants. Allison was one of these five children who lived in this house 13 years ago. She left because she was pushed down the stairs and she hasn't had contact with anybody in the family since then. Then one day Allison receives a letter from Roland, who is Dr. Capello's oldest son, basically saying that Dr. Capello is on his last legs and that she needs to come say goodbye if she wants to. Allison decides to go visit the house and Dr. Capello and she's seeking to find closure about what happened 13 years ago. I found the book to be very suspenseful but it also had a lot of humor in it to kind of balance it out which was nice. It's a very character driven story in my opinion. Each character is very unique in their own way and they all have their flaws which you couldn't help but love. The family was a complete train wreck. Like, it was just ridiculous, some of the things that went on in this house. Honestly, it was kind of like one of those reality shows where it's so bad that you have to keep watching. It's like The Bachelor, okay? That's what it's like, but like thriller suspense style. I really liked how there were little hints throughout the story to kind of build the mystery around the house and what happened 13 years ago, and I really liked how it was very slow at the beginning, but then it gradually built to this huge finale in the end. Overall, it was really entertaining and a super easy read. I read it in one day, so. The next book I have is Cadaver and Queen by Alyssa Quinty. I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars on Goodreads. Again, thank you to HarperCollins for sending me a copy of the book. I greatly appreciate it. This book follows Lizzie Lavenza, who is the first female medical student in the 1800s at a very prestigious school called Ingold. She faces a lot of prejudice before her first class even begin and she quickly realizes that she's going to have to work twice as hard as her male counterparts to gain the same traction at the school and that is when she meets a boy named Victor Frankenstein who used to be a student at the school but he was recently murdered a couple of months ago. Victor is now a biomechanical which is basically part human part machine. As time goes on Lizzie discovers a very sinister plan that the head of professors are partaking in. It basically involves the Queen of England and these new biomechanical soldiers. This is a Frankenstein retelling actually, which if you saw my recent video, your girl loves retelling, so I was very excited about this book. I did find it a bit slow at times. I think a lot of it could have been cut out and it still would have been effective, but Overall, I enjoyed it. I really liked Lizzie and Victor and the relationship that built between them. It was very slow, which you know, your girl don't like herself some insta-love, so I really enjoyed that part of the story. I also really liked the banter between Lizzie and her two friends, Will and Byram. I thought they were a hilarious group. I think that the idea behind the biomechanicals was really interesting, and I want another book with biomechanicals because it was a really cool concept. The only downfall I really have of this book was that the ending was very rushed, and then the epilogue was like six months later, but nothing was really explained at all in it, so it was just kind of like... Okay, that's the end. Cool. But overall, quick, fun, you know, 
it was good. And then the final book that I picked up for this month was American Panda by Gloria Chow. I was sent a copy of this book by Simon & Schuster, so thank you so much to Simon & Schuster because I absolutely loved it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows 17-year-old May who was just accepted into MIT to become a doctor. Basically, her whole life was planned for her by her parents. Her parents have already chosen her future husband. He is a Taiwanese doctor and they are hoping that she is going to pump out many babies in her future. Unfortunately for May, she has a fear of germs, so being a doctor is completely out of the question. She hates biology and she has a crush on a boy named Darren who is Japanese. She knows that she could never tell her parents any of this in fear of disappointing them, but after reconnecting with her brother Zing, who was disowned four years earlier for falling in love with somebody her parents didn't approve of. She decides that she needs to live life for herself and she goes on this huge adventure of self-discovery and it was just so well done. I flew through the book in one sitting. It's such an easy read. It's hilarious. I was giggling half the time. I absolutely loved May as a main character. She was so awkward and precious and I just wanted to like hug her at all times which she would probably have hated because germs but like I would have done it anyways. I really liked how she developed throughout the story and became more secure with who she was and stood up for herself more. I also loved Darren and May as a couple. They were so cute and I just wanted to squish them. I also really liked the whole culture aspect of this book because I had no idea about any of the Taiwanese cultures that they talked about so it was really interesting to read about that. I also really loved the messages that her mom sent her before every chapter. There was like these phone messages that her mom would leave on her phone. They were so funny. I just think overall the book was so well done. I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate to it. So I really enjoyed it. Definitely pick it up because it was released this month. So if you get the chance, read it. Also the like chapter headings have little dumplings and I just think it's like the cutest thing ever. So I highly recommend just for the dumplings. All right, guys, so that was my wrap up for February 2018th. How March will go, we do not know, but let me know down below what you read, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!